All right, welcome back to the show. It's nice to have you here. Today we're talking about coaches. Do coaches actually matter? It seems like sometimes the interim coach is better than the coach they hire after they fire the coach. So who knows? I really want to get to the bottom of are coaches important or is it just the guys that play basketball on the court that actually have an effect on the outcome of the game? The first thing we're going to talk about is rifle. That stands for randomization interference for leadership effectiveness. The University of Chicago, some professors there came up with it and they created it to take out all the factors that have nothing nothing to do with coaching, any sort of level of chance, weather, sickness, anything like that, and figure out, do coaches actually matter? And what they came up with is that coaches do matter about 20% to 30% when it comes to winning games. In baseball, they discovered that runs batted in had no effect based on the manager that was managing the team. A manager is a coach in baseball. In football, they noticed that in the NFL, coaches really didn't matter that much. But in college, coaches mattered a lot, which makes sense, because if you're a professional athlete, you have a lot of experience, and you probably need a lot less coaching. And in the NBA, which is what we're talking about today, when they fire a coach and they bring in a new coach, that team loses a lot. And that makes sense because if you're firing a coach, you're not doing well. So you either give up on a season or you bring in a new coach and you focus on rebuilding. And in the NBA, it seems that the first head to roll is always the coach. But why is that? Why is all the blame always going on the coach? Why are they always firing coaches? The reason is it's easy because firing a coach does not count against your cap. Granted, you have to pay that coach all of his money, but it doesn't count against the salary cap, which is pretty awesome. A player is harder to blame because you can cut a player, but you still have to pay him that money, and that money that you were spending on him still counts against your salary cap, so it really doesn't make sense to cut a guy. Coaches are also cheaper to cut. You can release a coach for not very much money. Take into account, coaches make way less money than players. The highest paid coach, Greg Popovich, at $11 million. Who does that equate to? In the player side, it equates to Reggie Jackson or Dwight Powell. If you're a general manager in you trade Dwight Powell, or if you're a general manager and you fire Greg Popovich, one's going to look like more of a move. If you have a bad season and you trade Dwight Powell, your owner is probably going to be like, they didn't do anything. They didn't make any changes. But if you fire the coach, they're going to think, oh, he's doing something. He's making some big changes around here. Good for him. I want to bring up the case of Frank Vogel. I believe Frank Vogel was unfairly fired. I believe the blame should go on Rob Palenka, maybe LeBron James if he had something to do with it. But the setup of that team, of the 20 2021-2022 season, Frank Vogel was not set up for success. His team was bad because of Rob Palenka. Rob Palenka ain't gonna fire himself. He has to put the blame on someone. So the easiest person, Frank Vogel. He got canned. They replaced him with Darvin Ham. The Lakers are still not good. I don't know when you're watching this, but trust me, the Lakers are still not good. But that is not Darvin Ham's fault. So what is the responsibility of a coach? Well, it's to manage the X's and O's. It's to figure out what your team's good at and what your team is bad at and adjust accordingly. For instance, Tyron Liu, the coach of the Clippers, in the playoffs in 2021, played the Jazz. He knew the Jazz were not good at defense. Their only good defender was Rudy Gobert. They played small ball and shot the hell out of the ball. Rudy Gobert cannot play on the perimeter. The Jazz were shot out of the game, and the Clippers won that series four games to two. Coaches run practices, so you need to know how to run a practice and run it for every guy in the rotation. Jim Boylan, in his first week coaching the Bulls in 2018, held a practice that was two and a half hours long, forced all the players to do win sprints and military push-ups. Then he scheduled a practice on a Sunday after a back-to-back. The players hated this. They did not want to do it. They filed a complaint with the players union. That's how much they hated this. So coaches need to factor in egos, not just egos as these are the best players in the world, but also the egos that they are grown men. They are not high school kids. You can't be a drill sergeant. You have to work with them. You are co-workers. You are not their boss. Coaches also have to develop players. Let's take Eric Spolstra. I think Eric Spolstra is a great example of a great development coach and his program, his assistants, his crew. The Heat rarely ever have a very high draft pick because they're always consistently good. They develop Bam out of bio, a three-time all-defensive player, Tyler Hero, the 2022 Sixth Man of the Year, and what I think's most impressive is Struz, Duncan Robinson, and Gabe Vincent all worked their way into the starting rotation, and they weren't even drafted. They took undrafted guys and created starters on a very successful playoff team. And of course, Greg Popovich. Greg Popovich 
is a great player development coach and he has a really great staff. And I think a lot of this comes from Greg Popovich's true concern for his players and caring about their well-being. Seems like every player that comes back to San Antonio daps up Pop, gives him a hug, and they seem to always have a really good interaction. I think the only person that doesn't is Kawhi Leonard. And I think he's the exception that proves the rule. Think about it, the Duncan, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, Greg Popovich era of the Spurs, I believe is the most consistent group of players in NBA history. If you disagree with that, let me know. Someone's gonna have something to say about that. Turns out caring for the people in your life results in winning basketball games. One coach I wanna bring up that worked is Willie Green with the New Orleans Pelicans. David Griffin fired Alvin Gentry and brought in Stan Van Gundy in 2020. Stan Van Gundy was fired within a year. Stan wanted to play veteran players. David Griffin wanted to develop the young players, your Jackson Hayes, your Zion Williamson's, even your Brandon Ingrams. But Stan Van Gundy didn't want to do that. Also, under Stan Van Gundy, Zion was not happy with his role in the offense, and Brandon Ingram just didn't like the guy. So wisely, David Griffin fired him, brought in Willie Green. Willie Green has had a lot of success. Despite not having Zion the 2021-2022 season, they still made the playoffs and won two games against the Phoenix Suns, the formidable Phoenix Suns. And I don't know when you're watching this, but right now, the Pelicans are third in the West. They just lost tonight, but I believe they're still third in the West. I don't know when you're watching this. I'm not updating this video every time the Pelicans have a game. But my point is, Willie Green is a good coach, and David Griffin was wise to figure out who was going to take this young group of guys who, with a lot of talent and maximize their potential. Personally, I do think coaching matters, but I really think all you need to do is be liked by your players and know how to manage a game. Know when to call timeouts, know when to make adjustments, know when to challenge a call, and don't get technical fouls. If you can do those things, you are a decent coach and you'll probably not keep your job. Unfortunately, the easiest person to fire is the coach. So I believe through the rest of time, I don't think anyone's going to realize that a lot of times losses aren't the coach's fault, but it doesn't really matter because other guys get opportunities. Those jobs are paying really well. So whatever, get in, get out, make a couple million dollars, let a new guy get in there and see what he can do with a team. All right. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Uh, you know, kiss your mom.